it makes you feel better than restaurant week here yeah. in city especially post pandemic right. restaurant week. everything's back in action enjoy here this year it all. Mm -hmm. absolutely and it's a chance to really enjoy restaurants you may not have never been yes and for good deals yes good prices. exactly mm -hmm. prices that uh, you would may not see the rest of the right, year right. so we're excited to bring that to you here mm -hmm. this morning glad you're with us i'm eric connor and i'm not at iran for thanks for joining us here let's check in with evan with that spritz in the air that's right that's yeah had to use the windshield wipers just a yeah. few times to kick off the morning i always like uh, restaurant week as an excuse to support local businesses i like to say that i single-handedly prop up you know the restaurants around here <laughs> i don't have to eat out as much as i do but i just have to support the local businesses that's always my excuse uh, good morning to you we kick off the day with temperatures mostly in the 50s we're going to see those clouds start to part by the afternoon but for the morning hours as netta mentioned an expansive marine layer out there so we're seeing a little bit of drizzle some low level clouds meaning fog uh, as we start off the morning by the time we get to the afternoon temperatures are going to be mild in the 60s for the most part let's take a look at what's going on in traffic to kick off the day so for starters earlier this morning we had a crash on the 67 that has now been cleared you can still see a little yellow on the northbound lanes there so running into some slightly slower speeds at that santa maria avenue exit beyond that no other major crashes or collisions to get to on your thursday morning Thank you, Evan. And now this morning, a man is in the hospital after being shot by police in San Carlos. Officers say he pointed a gun at them, and investigators tell us the man threatened his parents with a loaded gun. So this happened on Bonnie View Drive yesterday afternoon. That's between Murray Park Drive and Windermere Drive. And CBS H Dana Marie McNichol is live outside police headquarters downtown now with an update on this investigation. Good morning. Good morning to you both. What all happened around 430 yesterday afternoon when law enforcement received a call about a man inside a home acting suicidal. He was also threatening his elderly parents with a gun. So we were on scene speaking to neighbors about what they experienced. And here's one recounting those gunshots. There's uh, quite a bit of blood in the driveway and um, that causes for some alarm. Like some, someone got hurt. They're saying nobody got hurt and someone <laughs> did get hurt here. So that's kind of disturbing. Now, we spoke to the San Diego Police Department Captain Richard Friedman, who says when police brought in a canine safety unit to help respond, they arrived to found a white 60 year old man in an open garage with a gun pointed at police. Now, this prompted one officer to fire his weapon at least one time, striking the man. Medics were called at a man. Uh, medics were called for that man, and he was treated at the scene before being rushed to a nearby hospital in critical condition. Now, the gun was recovered inside the garage. We asked the police captain if a mental health crisis team had been called to the scene. He said he didn't believe they were, but the investigation investigation is going ongoing now San Diego Police Department homicide will be handling the investigation once complete it will be forwarded to the FBI of course if you'd like to read any more further information into this incident you can find that on cbs8.com I'm Dana Marie McNichol live in downtown San Diego I'll send it back to you Dana Marie thank you for that a trial date has been set for the sailor accused of starting the fire that destroyed the USS Bonham Richard here the trial is set to start in September 20 year old Ryan Mays was charged with hazarding of a vessel and aggravated arson in military court. Now, unlike in civilian court, Mays did not enter a plea, but will enter one at a later date. He could face a maximum of life behind bars if convicted. And one person is dead here and two others are hurt after a military plane from the Norfolk uh, Naval Air Station crashed along Virginia's eastern shore. This was near the state's border with Maryland. The Navy says their surviving crew members have non-life-threatening injuries and they are expected to recover. An investigation into what caused the crash is now underway. Let's get to the war in Ukraine right now. Russia has reportedly agreed to a temporary ceasefire in Mariupol. The Red Cross hopes to get civilians out. Meantime, the U.S. says Russian President Vladimir Putin may not be getting the full story about what is happening in Ukraine. The White House says Putin's senior advisors are afraid to tell him the truth about the military's poor performance. Let's get it over to Netta now. All right, Eric, thank you. And this morning, the state Senate they expected to take up a bill that would extend eviction protections before they end tomorrow. If this is passed, protections would be extended until June 30th for those who have applied for rent relief but have not yet received it. Meantime, people have until tonight to apply for that rent relief from the state. If you'd like to apply, we have a link at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. And now to our gas prices. Well, hey, they've gone down just a little bit here. The average price per gallon, $5.99. So it's about two cents less than the previous day. At least it's below the $6 mark. I know it's still tough. Uh, that's more than $2, more than a gallon we were paying a year ago.
but relief could be on the way. The White House now saying President Biden will deliver remarks today on efforts to cut our gas prices. According to reports, the president could announce plans to release up to one million barrels of oil per day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve. A strong storm system is carving through the south. A week after a different storm impacted millions. For many, it was like deja vu. More high winds, hail, tornadoes. One tornado touched down near Dallas, ripping the roofs off of homes. In Arkansas, a stronger tornado injured at least seven people and destroyed an elementary school building. Hundreds of thousands of people were left without power, but no deaths, fortunately, have been reported. Let's take a look at our weather back here at home. Checking in with Evan here on this Thursday morning. A little bit of a mist out there as yeah. you're uh, on the roads. Very, very light. So noticeable, I'll say, when you have to use, of course, the windshield wipers and get a little bit of that drizzle, but not quite as measurable as, say, Monday's storm that came through, right? That was kind of a package storm that came in with a low pressure system swinging through. It was anticipated to bring us a decent amount of precipitation. This one is that expansive marine layer and then embedded embedded in that marine layer are a few areas of drizzle. So that's where those clouds are kind of becoming heavy enough to uh, produce a good amount of moisture for us. Uh, wet roads to start off the morning are going to be the primary threat. We're not seeing much in terms of wind out there, and we're also not expecting these uh, accumulations to be anywhere close, even remotely close to what we saw on Monday. Uh, over the next several days between today and Monday of this next week, we're going to have a kind of rinse and repeat pattern. So each and every day, those clouds are going to rebuild overnight, right? They'll fill the sky, overcast skies, and then they'll break apart by the afternoon. But for those morning hours, keeps those temperatures mild, mostly in the 50s. It also allows for a little bit of that drizzle to come through. And then by the afternoon, the sun peaks through, helps to warm us up, but keep us mostly in the average range. The time that we see that switch is going to be about Tuesday of next week. Ridge of high pressure starts to build, and those temperatures climb all the way to the 80s for Thursday and Friday of next week. That's where we get a nice warm up, a generous amount of uh, off offshore flow, meaning those winds are going to come from the east and uh, incorporate some Santa Ana. So that's where we have the concern, of course, of higher fire danger, but also this is the typical trend that we would expect for a, a spring like weather pattern as we head toward the month of April. Here's what we have as we walk out the door right now. Temperatures are very uniform. You see mainly mid 50s out there from your coast all the way inland. None of those pockets of 30s or uh, 40s, and that is because that cloud layer is so expansive. So we're at 58 in Oceanside walking out the door, 55 in Escondido and 53 in Ramona. As you head toward your mountaintops, we've got a string of 40s for the most part and Borrego Springs at 62. But across the board, we're warmer right now than where we were 24 hours ago, and that's because of those clouds. They've been able to hold on to some of the warmth from yesterday. So in turn, uh, we're 4 degrees warmer in Ramona and Alpine, 7 degrees warmer in Julian, 11 degrees warmer in Brago Springs, and 6 degrees warmer in Oceanside compared to 24 hours ago. Uh, traffic has been very light on the roads. Earlier, we were tracking that one crash on the 67. That is no longer an issue. You see how uh, the roads are clear of any major crashes or collisions to start off the morning. A little bit of congestion mid-span on the Coronado Bridge. Back to you.